evidence that Penfolds explores four different avenues um, in terms of winemaking approach or winemaking philosophy. And the most traditional one, um, dating back to the early 50s and probably stemming from our fortified winemaking roots, would be multi-regional blending. You know, blending several regions together to strengthen each other and to create something that's more than the sum of their parts. We also go down the path of regional wines, for example RWT from the Barossa Valley. There's also now a sub-regional wine coming from a sub-region within the Barossa called Marananga. And of course single vineyard wines and the most famous example for us uh, of that would be McGillis State Shiraz. So when we think about what the French refer to as terroir, I probably think more about sense of place. And with multi-regional wines, sense of place is suddenly redefined and it might be that your sense of place is South Australia that you're capturing. Whereas with RWT or Bin 128 from Kunawara, I think your sense of place is Barossa that you're capturing or Kunawara for Bin 128, you're capturing the region. For the sub-region, you're obviously capturing something from within borders um, that are within a region. And McGill Estate is probably a little bit more in keeping with the traditional French use of the word terroir in that your sense of place that you're capturing is one vineyard, one plot, one site. Uh, but in saying that, we harvest that one site row by row, block by block. We ferment batch by batch. So in a sense, it's um, still a blend. It's just that you've redefined what you're blending. Well, I think, you know, unlike a lot of other wine brands where you start with your entry-level range or your entry-level wine and you build your flagship, you know, Grange is what came first for us. In terms of our modern winemaking era, really kicked off in the 50s, Grange was what started it all, the 1951 Bin 1 Grange Hermitage. And I think for, for us that means Grange almost acts as the patriarch. You know, every other wine that we look at, whether it's Saint Henri, whether it's 389, whether it's Bin 28, whether it's the, the new contemporary Bin 169, they all somehow stem from that patriarch or that flagship that sits at the top. 169 uh, being in 2012 at the moment and 169 being from the 2008 vintage, people keep saying to me, you know, this has been a four year work in progress to finally release it. It's actually been a work in progress for a whole lot longer than that. I think it's been a work in progress for decades. For us to introduce bin 169 um, might be an easy concept in theory, but of course you might compromise your flagship bin 707 by taking fruit away from that style. Introducing a new wine at that top level, that top tier, means that you can never compromise what you already have in that top tier. So it's about diversifying at the top level. So 169 for us was a search for a style that was probably a little bit more varietal. When I look at 707, I use a lot of fruit descriptors, black currant and cassis, um, riper characteristics, opulence in terms of style, quite fleshy. 169, I probably use a lot of descriptors that aren't fruit derived, you know, whether it be a tomato relish, whether it be some sage, whether it has some cedary notes from the oak influence, because the oak influence is 100% French as opposed to 707, which is 100% American. So again, that helps with stylistic diversity.